What's good, YouTube? Because of Kobe here. So we're diving into a request from Way. This one is Rock and Roll Nerd by Tim Minchin. I really loved the last song we did by Tim. It was very deep. White Wine in the Sun is what that one was called. I really liked that song a whole lot. So I'm interested to see what kind of storytelling and interesting lyricism we get from this one as well. He's an extremely talented and detailed writer. That's the one thing I do know about him from that song we did by him. He's very descriptive. He's very good at storytelling. And I love his vibe. I love how emotional he gets. I love his energy. And it's it's a lot of inspiration in the last one that we did, right? It was a lot of fucking inspiration in that. So I imagine with this one, Rock and Roll Nerd is a cool name for a song. I imagine it'll be about how he loves rock and roll and his journey inside of rock and roll and everything like that. It's probably what we're going to get here. So way, thank you, my friend, for your request. I appreciate you a whole lot. Subscribe for me if you're new here. We talk about mental health, addiction, world issues, everything in between. Break down all the lyrics, the instrumentation, stage performance, lighting. I like going the whole nine yards on here, really breaking down the lyrics of these songs and relating them to our own lives. I think it's beneficial. Music has a lot of value when it comes to being relatable and helping people to feel less alone. I like to encourage people that are struggling with mental health or addiction problems to go get the professional help that is available because you can live a better life for yourself. You can become successful inside of the things that you want to do. Then you can encourage other people to also go do that same thing for their self. If they're struggling with those things and you can have your own story as a source of inspiration and proof to that person that they can have faith in getting better and that it is actually possible. That's why I love getting on here with you guys and reacting to these songs and also putting out my own music for you guys as well. I've put out three songs this week, so go check those out for me. I would really appreciate it. I've put a lot of thought into writing them and structuring the story of it and everything, so please. Go check those out for me. I really enjoy making music for you guys as well. We have had an amazing time on the channel thus far. I really appreciate every single one of you, and I thank you so much for your support. It's a blessing to be able to get on here and do this whenever not too long ago I was barely able to keep myself alive. I was in such a deep hole, so it really is a blessing to be here. We're going to get into this for you. I'm Vakasa Kavi. A reaction video a day or two. Keep the doctor away. Fuck those apples. This is Rock and Roll Nerd by Tim Minchin. doesn't have a problem with drugs mm. he just doesn't get them <laughs> he's fine that his mates have tattoos but he thinks they'll regret them <laughs> he likes going to pubs but he hates it when the music's too loud he tends not to go to rock concerts because he can't stand the crowds but all he's ever wanted to be is a rock star on Rage or MTV But he knows that it's not fucking likely He just turned 30 He knows <laughs> that he will always be A rock and roll nerd He'll keep writing songs the world will never hear And do they won't be heard He'll just keep writing Oh yeah But you see the problem is I love him. <laughs> I love him, dude. He puts so much comedy into his lyricism. He really does. He's a very, very creative person. We need to get into some more of him as well. We have so much to cover on here. We have opened up so many musical doors that we still have a huge amount of songs to cover on, right? He said he doesn't have a problem with drugs, he just doesn't get them. It's a double. Right out of the gate, he hit us with a double, saying he doesn't have a drug problem, but he also doesn't have a problem with people doing them either. He just doesn't get them. <laughs> In either sense of the matter, he doesn't get why people like them, and he doesn't go get them for himself either. 
He's fine that his mates have tattoos, but he thinks they'll regret them. He likes going to pubs, but he hates when the music's too loud. It's saying he's like the polar opposite of what he's trying to be, like the the scene that he wants to be a part of. He's like the polar opposite of everything inside of it. And he says here, he tends to not go to rock concerts because he can't stand the crowds. But all he's ever wanted to be is a rock star on Rage or MTV. But he knows that it's not fucking likely he's just turned 30. <laughs> oh, God. I imagine he's pretty much touching on his own feelings and his own story of his career. I really imagine that's what he's doing here. He says he knows that he will always be a rock and roll nerd. He'll keep writing songs the world will never hear. And though they won't be heard, he'll just keep writing. That's passion and love right there. I always say, you should do what you love no matter what. It doesn't matter if, like, something gets a billion million views. Like, the internet has kind of done this weird thing where it's like... People don't realize that... If a hundred people were standing in front of you, you'd be, like, a little bit nervous in that situation in some instances. Especially if you have to speak to them or something, or, like, perform for them or something like that. A hundred people is a lot of fucking energy, right? That's a lot of energy in the same area. And people act like a song isn't great or something unless it gets a million views or this many likes or whatever but it's like just imagine that many people standing in front of you right and then the numbers that the internet considers small will suddenly actually be relevant that's what the essence of this is kind of like, you know what I mean? I like that. It's like I have I have a tough time around the crowds, the story that he's telling here. Wow. It's facts, man. Yeah, when you apply that to real life, it's like crowds are fucking filled with a lot of energy and some people struggle to be around that they have like social anxiety or very nervous and shy kind of people or whatever and they just kind of have that nervous energy that makes it hard for them to properly show their talents and display them to the world fully right like i said the internet nowadays throws everything out of context where it's like things that are actually making an impact and are relevant don't get recognized as much because the numbers aren't high but it's like uh when you really pick it apart and look into it there's songs on youtube that have like 10 fucking views that are better than what mainstream's putting out and that's facts right there that is truly facts right there i like this so far he's dreamt of being a star that he learned piano instead of guitar <laughs> Which in the 90s didn't get you very far <laughs> So while the other kids were learning Stairway He was the piano to their forte <laughs> But he was convinced one day he'd rock their fucking asses be an icon for the disenfranchised masses wow. Grow his hair long and rebel against the state But just for now that it'd have to wait Cause he's running late for his morning classes And he will... <laughs> oh goodness He's such a gem man He's so wholesome is he not I love it he really is a gem inside of the music industry. I love his style, man. He's so... I like how he doesn't take it very serious. It's like... You feel like you're watching a comedy-style kind of movie when you're reading his lyrics and listening to his storytelling. So, but you see, the problem is he always dreamt of being a star, but he learned piano instead of guitar, which in the 90s didn't get you very far facts though that was like the grunge kind of era that we had going on there in the 90s right you had a lot of grunge and shit starting to come out very very interesting period of time for music very very emotional period of time for music as well so while all the other kids were learning stairway he was the piano to their forte nice wordplay there i like that but he was convinced one day he'd rock their fucking asses be an icon for the disenfranchised masses 
his lyricism is really good. I like his rhyme schemes. And I like how much he's saying in it. He's going to be an icon for the disenfranchised masses and grow his hair long and rebel against the state. But just for now, that would have to wait because he's running late for his morning classes. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. He's telling his story in a very witty, like, sarcastic kind of manner here. And like I said, I like that he doesn't take it so seriously like that. It's really cool. Always be a rock and roll nerd. He'll keep playing gigs that no one knows about. And though it sounds absurd, he'll just keep playing. Oh, yeah. But you see, the problem is there's not much depth in what he's singing. He's a victim of his upper middle class upbringing. So he can't write about the hood. <laughs> bling, bling. So he sits and imagines his girlfriend is dead <laughs> To try and evoke some angst in his middle class head Good God <laughs> The bitch is always fine at half past nine when they go to bed And he's not spent a single night in prison He has no issues with nutrition He has no drinking <laughs> problem and no drug addiction Unless you count the drugs they put in chicken and Oh my goodness always tends to make him cough He doesn't look good with his t-shirt off And when he tries to act tough You can tell he's tricking This guy's one of the best artists ever He really is I love it He's so He's just himself Really realistically That's all he's doing is being himself There's so much fun inside of this he's one of the funnest artists ever for real i love this right here way i appreciate you requesting this we definitely do have to get into more of his music i fucking love stuff like this but you see the problem is there's not much depth in what he's singing he's a victim of his upper middle class upbringing that rhyme scheme right there is amazing. I love that, the sentence structure. He's a victim of his upper middle class upbringing. That's very nice right there. Very, very nice tie-in. So he can't write about the hood or bling bling upbringing. And r r rhyming upbringing with bling bling is epic. That, <laughs> that is golden right there. I love it. So he sits and imagines his girlfriend is dead to try and evoke some angst in his middle class head. My guy got dark. He's getting dark with it there, right? He's, he got even darker, though. He said, but the bitch is always fine at half past nine when then we go to bed. When they go to bed, he says. <laughs> oh, man. You gotta love it. I love blunt lyricism like this. It's sarcastic, it's blunt, it's comedic, it's got a dark undertone to it, but it's also talking about success at the same time. It's a very, very nice mixture of things going on here. He's not spent a single night in prison. He has no issues with nutrition. He has no drinking problem and no drug addiction. He's like, what the hell am I going to sing about? That's what he's talking about there. He's like, what the hell do I have to sing to you guys about? And he says, I'm going to tell you that I don't have what anybody else has. I just have what I have. <laughs> That's what he's doing. <laughs> The less you count the drugs they put in chicken and steroids, mm, performance enhancing drugs, not, not, not the way that humans would use them. I mean, we got like super chickens when you look at how they are. It's like they're fucking grown essentially and like lab grown nearly, I would say, right? Marijuana always tends to make him cough. He doesn't look good with his t-shirt off. My guy says, I really have absolutely nothing in the entire world going for me except the fact that I'm funny as fuck. And that works, my friend. That works. <laughs> he said, when he tries to act tough, you can tell he's tricking. <sighs> my word. He's not even done yet. There's still so much more. <laughs> Okay. Pills and having 
fun. He goes home and showers and gets a good eight hours. He gets his thrills from his morning run. And while his mates will go on dates, I take him speed and drinking cans oh, of chip beans. He's the cooks, curls up with the book with the girl he's had since he was 17. This is, I feel like this is so deeply personal, though. But like, the thought that went into this is, it's very personal. This means a lot to him, right? This song means a lot. This is a very beautiful song. I love this. He structured a whole movie of his career and his emotions inside of it and made this uh, epic fucking description of it in song form. And I love the lyricism. His descriptions are so pure when it comes to how real life is. He's so great. This is a, this is amazing. It's epic, dude. While his mates all go out late popping pills and having fun, he goes home and showers and gets a good eight hours. He gets his thrills from his morning run. <laughs> While his mates all go on dates, taking speed and drinking cans of Jim Beam. He stays home and cooks, curls up with a book with the girl he's had since he was 17. He's saying, I, I literally settled into my life before I was even an adult with this girl. <laughs> He's like, I don't have fucking nothing to say except for this right here. Telling you my exact story and the hilarity of what I've done with myself through it, right? He reminds me of Weird Al Yankovic, right? And I really like Weird Al. He's fucking epic. Reminds me a lot of that, those kind of vibes. And he's telling his own story here. This is extremely descriptive and very beautiful storytelling. Cause he's never really been part of the scene. <laughs> Give him guns and roses, he'll take Queen. He's more into Beatles than the Stones. He's more Stevie Wonder than Ramones. Wow, and he's never bars. Owned a panel van. He never shot a Pantera van. Good he God. The difference between metal and thrash. He couldn't tell you nothing about Axel and Slash. He likes Ben Falls and the Jackson 5. He knows all the words to stay in a and though he yeah, wanted to be all crunchy and cool, he spent 11 years at a private school, so it don't matter. He's got bars. His lyricism is very similar to hip-hop, actually. Very, very similar to hip-hop, and I love that for him. I love that he can turn that into his own thing like this. But it's very, very similar to the style of lyricism you see in many hip-hop songs, and I appreciate the fuck out of it. He said, because he's never really been part of the scene, give him guns and roses, he'll take Queen. He's more into Beatles than the Stones. He's more Stevie Wonder than Ramones. That is uh, one of the greatest fucking string-along bar schemes that I've ever heard. Ever. Really. That is one of the best fucking stretches of lyrics I've ever read in my entire life. That is so well structured. It rolls beautifully together. He is a very, very smart mind when it comes to writing. He's never owned a panel van. He's never shot a Pantera fan. Good God, man. The references here. He is like in deep with the references. He doesn't know the difference between metal and thrash. That is epic, dude. He's fucking getting to everything right here wow doesn't know the difference between metal and thrash <laughs> thrash is more punky that's the that's the difference it's more punk influenced sort of more up like half beat kind of tempos inside of it mixed with a like slowed down breakdown and kind of section a lot of the time lots of soloing and shit like that that's basically the difference it's not too complicated thrash has a little bit more punk inside of it whereas back in the day the metal scene really hated punk and thrash was kind of like the way i would see it as punk rockers who were actually really fucking good at their instruments that's how i would put it <laughs> He couldn't tell you nothing about Axel and Slash. He likes Ben Folds and the Jackson 5. He knows all the words. To, and then he hits the note, the fucking falsetto. Staying alive, bro. I fucking love it right there. No, he wants to be all grunchy and cool. He spent 11 years in a motherfucking private school. That's what the lyric sheet says. He censored it here. But, yeah, that's what the lyric sheet says. 
he he says, I want to be grungy and I want to be cool, but I was 11 years into a fucking private school. Like, I don't know, man. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> hey, I think you're pretty fucking cool. If Tim ever happens to see this video, I have to throw that in there. You're pretty fucking cool, sir. <laughs> He tries, he cannot hide behind his rock and roll wise. Man. Man. The the nice backing vocals. The band sounds amazing. Nice bass guitar. Drums killing it. Damn it. He knows that his music lacks depth, but it just can't be helped. <laughs> he has nothing interesting to say. So he writes about himself. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to seem self-obsessed, so he writes in third person. <laughs> in an attempt to seem more rock and roll, but he suspects it's not working. This guy is so great. <laughs> deep in his heart, he knows that he'll never be silver chair or Eskimo Joe. Wow. And even if he was quite pretty with small pants like Kylie, he knows. Well, I got really said, you know what? You know what? He said, my God, this is one of the greatest things I've ever read and had the privilege of listening to in my entire life. I appreciate this because of what he's doing right here. So, so it don't matter how he tries, he cannot hide behind his rock and roll lies. I mean, 11 years in a fucking private school, what are you gonna, how are you gonna hide that, right? It's like the, the fucking ending scenes of 8 Mile, right? I mean, like, come on now, Clarence. <laughs> right? <laughs> He said, so it don't matter how he tries, he cannot have behind his rock and roll lies, because you've either got it or you don't, you'll either rock it or you won't. You've either got it or you don't, you'll either rock it or you won't. He says he knows that his music lacks depth, but it just can't be helped. He has nothing interesting to say, so he writes about himself, but he doesn't want to see himself obsessed, so he writes in third person. <laughs> his storytelling is insane, dude. His storytelling is amazing. In an attempt to seem more rock and roll, but he suspects it's not working. And deep in his heart, he knows that he'll never be Silver Chair or Eskimo Joe. And even if he was quite pretty with small pants like Kylie, he knows that he will always be a rock and roll nerd, he says. What he did here with this song is brilliant. And I understand why it blew up. He took the possible opinions of everybody else and threw them out onto the fucking table, and he name-dropped every important person in the industry that he wanted to be a part of as well, and said, you know what, I don't even want to fucking be like you, and I'm going to tell you even all the things that you might say are wrong with me, and I'm going to do it in third person. <laughs> He's low-key putting everything on notice with this song. That's... <laughs> he said, tell a better story than me, though. That's what he said with this right here. I love it. He knows exactly what the fuck he was doing with this, and it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant, and I understand why this song was as, as successful as it was. Oh, Eskimo Joe. <laughs> and even if he was quite pretty... With small pants like Kylie, he knows that he will always be. Beautiful. Yes. He'll keep writing songs the world don't care about. No real sounds of sir, he'll just keep writing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh my god. Yes, sir. He ended it with Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> Oh my goodness. This is one of the damnedest, greatest fucking things I've ever seen in my entire life. Way back, thank you so much for this goddamn reaction video right here. <laughs> I'm so happy. This is one of the best songs ever written. Really, truly is one of the greatest songs that I've ever heard in my whole life. He says he knows that he will always be a rock and roll nerd. He'll keep writing songs the world don't care about. And though it sounds absurd, he'll just keep writing. And yeah, you can criticize him, but he won't care. Because he wants to rock and he will never be deterred. But he'll always be a fucked up little try hard wannabe rock and roll nerd. Tim, respect. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the best self disses I've ever heard in my entire life. First off, to write it from third person is wild, and I love it. I love that he said everything that every critic could ever possibly say about him for them, and wrote it like he was talking about somebody else. And he told you the whole fucking story of where he came from, and how it's basically, um... It's really a, it's a drastically large middle finger to everybody who has something to say about him. Honestly, he didn't present it that way because it's written as a self diss. But when you consider all the the name dropping, the references to artists inside of the industry, genres inside of the industry. Showing that he can hit the note from staying alive as well. That's very impressive that he threw that in there vocally, right? He he showed up and he showed out and he also showed off. He really did. Even though it's a self-diss. That's the greatest thing about it is that it shines so much. Even though he's literally talking about every criticism that could possibly be said about him from anyone's perspective. The way he made it shine and have so much comedy and so much hilarity and kept it real to how he was without directly saying that it's about him, right? That's fucking epic right there. I love it. Like, his his vibe is different. His energy is off the charts. The band sounded freaking amazing. And I really love the backing vocals, the bass line was very strong as well. I like the bass line inside of it. And then he closes it out with Stairway to Heaven whenever one of the first bars in this, right? When we go up here, here it is. You see, the problem is he always dreamt of being a star, but he learned piano instead of guitar, which in the 90s didn't get you very far. So while all the other kids were learning Stairway, he was the piano to their forte. I love that right there. There's also a whole annotation here, and I'm going to read it. I didn't click on it when we were breaking it down just because we had a lot of words to get into. But now that we're at the end, if you guys are still here, we're going to read this. Piano Forte was the original name of the instrument. We just got in the habit of shortening it to piano. In musical terms, the dynamic piano means softly, whilst forte means loud. Mm-hmm. So he's saying, I was the soft to their loud, right? Wow, it's a clever double. Yes, it is. Indeed, it is. <sighs> man. Man, oh, man. You got to appreciate his level of thought, like the doubles inside of here. We caught other doubles inside of here as well. And the references, like I said, were off the charts. I, lo I love that we read that annotation. While playing this live, Minchin plays and sings piano loudly, then plays and sings forte very softly, therefore creating a joke in which the effect of the words are reversed. Hey, he did do that. Yes, he did. <laughs> oh, Jesus, man. Jesus. That is so fucking funny right there. I'm glad we clicked on that annotation. There's a whole other layer to it after reading that. See what I mean? He's re He really is a genius. 
He's a very genius songwriter, and I love a self-disc like this. It's always good to have fun, joke around with yourself. To do it in third person, like I said, that's really wild, and I like that he did it in that manner. And it was also kind of like putting a lot of people in their place, saying, I already know what you're going to say about me and how you're going to feel about me wanting to do this, but I'm going to fucking do it anyway, so... Here's everything you have to say about me for you. Right? <laughs> I love that. I love that kind of vibe. He's just like, I'll say it for you, whatever. If you're going to say it anyhow, I'm just going to write this third person self this. And Tim is epic for that. This was really fucking awesome. Way, thank you again for this request. I really appreciate this one. This is a fun song right here. One of the funnest we've had on the channel. Certainly one of my favorites. Tim will have to be featured on the channel more after this one, certainly. I really fucking like this a lot, truly. The original video for this will be in the description. As always, subscribe to Tim, support all the artists we have on the channel. It's what we do this for, help get the music out into the world, relate it to our own lives, discuss the topics inside of it. I really appreciate songs like this one, especially. Beautiful storytelling and great lyricism, amazing vibe from the whole band, and great, great switch-ups inside of the genres and everything as well. Beautiful performance right here. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Like I always say, if you're going through the mental health or addiction struggles, please get the professional help that's available. Go live your best life. Make something of yourself. Use your talents that you have and things that you're good at to inspire people and to show people that they can be great at things too and teach people how to do things, all that sort of stuff. You guys know what I mean. I love you guys so much. We're going to get out of here. I'm Bacasa Kavi. A reaction video a day or two. Keep the doctor away. Fuck those apples. Leave a like for me. Comment those suggestions. Subscribe up this way. Bang the notification bell for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. So I love you so much. Thank you for everything. Have a blessed night. Peace.